you doing down here? How can you be here? How... I don't even want to question it. You question everything, Robin. That's part of what I love about you. <laughs> but how can I be talking to you and, and seeing you? years. It still hurts. I tried to prepare myself when you were dying, but I wasn't ready to lose you. All my friends and family, they told me that I would go through the five stages of grief and that I would finally reach acceptance and, and find peace. But, and I knew that you wanted me to go on with my life. Yes, when you were standing in front of the window on that last morning, I could let you go then, because I knew you would go on. But I've always carried you with me. I've never let go. I've never forgotten you. God, I remember the first time that I met you. I remember, I remember thinking... What an obnoxious jerk. No, what, what a cute, <laughs> obnoxious jerk you were. I remember when we went joyriding in Sunny's Jag. And I talked you into putting the pedal to the metal and you got pulled over by a state trooper? <laughs> yes, we were going so fast, I was terrified. Oh, and then we got so busted, I remember seeing the red flashing light in the rearview mirror. For sheer terror. <laughs> Nothing can match what you talked me into doing. Getting up in front of everybody at the nurse's ball and doing that scene from Romeo and Juliet. I'm sorry. Yes. And that night that you went bungee jumping, you weren't even scared. I was so scared for you. I can still see your face standing on the edge of the ledge. I can hear you screaming as you fell the entire way down. You were so... Alive. Happy. God, you made me so happy. Honestly, it was the best time of my life. Even though I left you to live with HIV? these years to build me up in your memory and you forget the ways I failed you. You didn't fail me. You were the love of my life. I was careless. I slept with a girl I knew did intravenous drugs. I only got tested for HIV once. I told you that you were safe with me and it wasn't true. We made those mistakes together. It wasn't your fault. You still can't let yourself get angry at me. Even after all these years. You need to see me for who I was. And you need to let me go. Or you really cannot move on. I tried to move on. I... Now I wish I hadn't. You know, I, I, I fell in love with Patrick and I married him. And then he went and cheated on me. You know? You would have never done that. How can you be sure? Because I know you. You knew a 19-year-old boy who got a death sentence. We were stopped in our tracks by the reality of AIDS. Robin, our time was limited, so we tried to make everything count. We did. Every single moment was precious. What if I hadn't gotten sick? What if I had lived? What if we had followed our dreams? Would we have fallen apart? Would we have argued? No, we would have figured out a way to be together. Our, our love was that strong. Tell me about Patrick. Tell me, why did you fall in love with him? <laughs> I don't know, at first I thought he was an obnoxious jerk. <laughs> Seeing a pattern. I thought he was a cliche, you know, a brilliant surgeon with a god complex, chasing everything in the skirt. What changed your mind? There was this one surgery. Patrick had blood-on-blood -blood contact with an AIDS patient. And he had to do a drug therapy to prevent infection. We talked a lot in those days, and I got to see this side of Patrick, you know, this vulnerable side that he didn't show to the rest of the world. And 
he got to see me, you know, someone that faces her fears. <laughs> and I don't know, when it was all said and done, I was able to see Patrick for this kind, vulnerable man that I wanted to marry. Then you got everything I wished for you. I believed Patrick when he said that he wanted to commit to me to be a husband and a father. But he didn't change. You know, and y you can't have things both ways. Making a new life with someone while holding on to the past. Exactly. Kind of like what you're doing with me. I'm not excusing what Patrick did. I'm just saying, I'm just saying there's two sides to everything. Wait a minute. You're comparing my husband cheating on me to me honoring the memory of someone that I loved? How have you been honoring me? What kind of question is that? Humor me. <sighs> I don't know. The photo albums and... A diary, you know, sometimes I get it out and I read it. How often? <sighs> I don't know. Something really sad happened last spring, so I, I read it then. And Patrick knows you're reading your old diary about your first love. Well, so what? You know, he wasn't very nice about it, which baffles me, because what happened with us it happened a long time ago. I mean, long before I even met Patrick. And, and I try to honor your memory by, by giving back to the HIV and AIDS community. I mean, it went to Africa to help people that were suffering. Suffering the way I suffer. Yes. What is wrong with that? Nothing. Nothing. But you put all those pieces together and it paints a really clear picture. Come on, there's a place in your heart that's permanently out of Patrick's reach. Do you wish you died when I did? No. No, never. I... I love my life. I love my career. I love my friends. My family. I have a daughter. Emma. The daughter that I never thought I could have. I almost named her Anna Karen, like you and I had talked about, but... It was not some child that I dreamed of. She's real. She's my daughter with Patrick. I can't let her grow up without me. I she needs me, so... I have to get home to her. Then you will. I'll always love you, Stone. I know. <laughs> that is why I'm here. Because I'm part of you. I love you.